It's okay. You are safe. I got lost. I was hiking and somehow... I don't know. Here. Drink this. You are dehydrated. Thank you. I'm Amelia. Amelia Dearborn. I can get you back to your camp. Or the highway. Whichever you prefer. You saved my life. Don't I even get to know your name? We can head out in the morning. There is some food beside you if you are hungry. You have it so dark in here. Where are we? It, it's like some kind of a cave. It is my home. What is your name? My father never gave me a name. But he must have. What did they call you growing up? They only called me Monster. Storm seems to be getting stronger. It should pass in about an hour. I've always been just a little scared of thunder, lightning storms in general. <laughs> it's so silly. At least I have you to protect me. Why? Why won't you let me see your face? I have my reasons. I'm sure that it is a nice face. Are you afraid that I may see it and instantly fall in love with you? <laughs> we could set up housekeeping in this cave. It would be so romantic. <laughs> Storm is starting to die down. We should be able to head out soon. Please, though, allow me to see what you look like. Why is it so important to you? Because... because I want to remember the person who saved me. I'm saving you now. I'm saving you from the horror that eased my face. I don't believe you. I'm sure that it is quite a handsome face. It is a face that was born in hell. It can't be that bad. I know your heart is good. Otherwise, you would have left me out there to die. So please, let me see your face. No! You are a good person, Amelia. I don't want you to remember a, a monster. I can't believe that. You are no more a monster than some of the people I've met in my career. So, come on. Let me see it. <laughs> I said no. I bet that you have very kind eyes. A slight pout for a mouth. No! I bet your hair is long, black, full of curls. <laughs> Something I could just run my hands through. I said no! <laughs> and a beautiful nose. Very regal. High cheekbones that give your face a very royal look. Do you really want to see it? Do you want to gloat on the ugliness? The horror? Then behold. Look upon me. Feast your eyes. Run. Scream into the night about the... The... Monster! You have kind eyes. Eyes that have seen pain and suffering. Do you not want to run away? Screaming in terror. Why would I do something silly like that? You are a most remarkable woman. <laughs> no more remarkable than anyone else. Some would say that I am a very hard woman. Why would anyone say that? Oh, I don't know. I am a defense attorney, so I try to see the good in everyone even though they may be guilty of some crime. So why would you defend them if you knew that they were guilty? Because that is my job. <laughs> I mean, everyone, no matter who it is, is considered innocent until proven guilty. I have never been innocent. I was born, or rather made, evil. I don't believe that in the least. 
No one is born evil. I was created by insanity in the very bowels of hell. <sighs> For someone created? You are extremely articulate. It took some time to become that way. Hmm. So what is your name? I mean, who are you? You would not believe me. Yes, I would. <sighs> Have you ever read a book titled Frankenstein? By Mary Shelley? <gasps> yeah, once in college. So you only know part of the story. I mean, how she wrote the book. That has been discussed for many years. Some hold that it was a particularly frightening nightmare that she had, while others say that she saw a face in the window, and it inspired her to write the story. I was the face in the window. <laughs> you do realize how impossible that is. Nevertheless, it is true. I was the one Mary saw. But that was over 200 years ago. You can't be that old, or even alive. And yet, here I stand before you, the monster created by a mad genius and then thrown away. So, what you are saying, the book Frankenstein is actually... My life story. <laughs> I saw Mary and the others arrive at the mansion. They were all so young, idealistic. I watched them from the woods with envy. How I wanted to join them, to be human. But I dared not. Because of the way you looked. Yes, I was afraid. But not so fearful as to at least catch a glimpse through the window of this beautiful woman. Love at first sight? I suppose you could call it that. Mary was the most beautiful woman that I had ever seen. One night, I decided to get a closer look at this woman who had entranced me. And that was when she saw you. Yes. But what no one knows is that she came to, to look for me. And she found you? Yes. She did. I tried to hide my ugliness from her, just as I tried with you. So what you're telling me is that there really was a Victor Frankenstein who created a man out of parts of humans? Yes, I really was. But you died at the end, along with Victor, and your revenge against him, killing his fiance, the child. Do you believe everything that you read? Wouldn't be much of a defense attorney if I did. Part of the story is true. Victor created me and then discarded me as a failed experiment. I was angry. I wanted revenge against him, but I never killed anyone. So what happened? I hunted Victor, but he eluded me. I followed him to America, but eventually lost him. I stayed hidden from people, living like an animal. Hmm. Sounds like you still want revenge. I found out Victor did indeed have a family here. And if you ever found one of these descendants, what would you do? That is the trouble with revenge. It rarely satiates the appetite. I would want to know if my story, my true story, was ever handed down. Perhaps I can help you with that. First, we have to give you a name. Now let's see. How about John? No, no. Too plain. You're definitely not plain. Joe? No, same reason. What do you call yourself? One time I called myself Legion. <laughs> I get it! Because you were made from many parts! <laughs> I never found it to be funny. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. 
Okay, so let's come up with a name. How about... Oh, wait! I've got it! The perfect name! Are you ready? I'm... not sure. Adam! We shall call you Adam. Don't you see? You are the first, so your name should be Adam. I do like it. Amelia, why are you doing this? Perhaps it is because you saved my life. I would have died out there, lost in the forest. Uh, or maybe it's because I see a good man who needs my help now. You seem to be the kind of person that likes to help others. You remind me of that blind man. You mean there really was a blind man? He was kind to me. Without eyes, he could not judge me on my ugliness. He taught me to read, to speak, to know kindness. But his family... That was all Mary Shelley's doing. I, I didn't mean to imply... I mean... Oh, forget it. No. Forgive me. I shouldn't lash out at you. We should be heading towards the highway. Yes, we really should. We have quite a bit of work ahead of ourselves. What sort of work? Well, we must do all of this the legal way. Which means you have to have a birth certificate, social security number... <laughs> and how would I get such things? Oh, believe me. There are ways. I was created, not born. And what will I do for money? No, Amelia. I have hidden myself from the world for far too long to change now. But the world has changed. Are you afraid of what people will say about your face? Partially, yes. You have no idea the kind of pain that is caused to see little children scream and run in terror from you. To hear men shout and curse you. To never know the love of a woman. No. I can never go back. But people are not like that anymore. According to you, you have lived over 200 years. You don't get out much, do you? But seriously, though, times have changed. People have changed. Have they? <laughs> you wouldn't even believe me if I told you. Did I run screaming into the night? <sighs> no, you didn't. Adam, I have a plan. I want to show you how different the world is now. The world may be different, but humans will never change. Then let me prove it to you. Come with me. Let me show you that you can be human. That you can be a man. I... I'm afraid, Amelia. Not for myself, but for you. That's a very human thing to be, Adam. Well, here we are. Home sweet home. Please, Amelia, don't turn on the lights. It's okay, Adam. I've already seen your face, and... I'm not afraid. I have felt your heart. It will be fine. I am not used to such kindness. Well, I believe you will get used to it. It is a different world now. You have a very lovely home, Amelia. Now then, on to business. First thing in the morning, I'm going to call Judge Stevens. And don't worry, he's an old friend. And then, we're going to get you some new clothes. Won't it be difficult to find clothes for an eight-foot giant? I can just go to the big and tall store on ninth. I'm sure they will have anything that will fit you. Why, Amelia? I don't understand the question, Adam. Why do you feel... You think that you have to help me? You showed me kindness, Adam. You helped me. You saved my life. I only want to repay your kindness. You must forgive me for being so suspicious of you. I have never met anyone like you in my entire existence. 
<laughs> well, I haven't heard that one before. Believe me, Adam, I am not the only one. Now, let's get something to eat and get some rest. It's going to be a very busy day tomorrow. Amelia, what a wonderful machine! No it will only rot that remarkable brain of yours. Why did you turn it off? As you told me once, don't believe everything you read. Well, don't believe everything you see on that thing either. My daddy told me once to never believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. Besides, you need to get dressed. I hope everything fits. Well, what do you think? Ah, you look very dapper. The shirt is a bit tight. Hey, don't worry about that. I can fix it. You really are looking quite handsome. I suppose no one's ever told you that, and I never lie. Please, Amelia. No, really. I'm eight feet tall. Look at the size of my hands. I'm clumsy. I'm a freak. Don't ever, ever say that. You are a beautiful soul. When or if the whole world puts you down, never put yourself down. <sighs> now... Let me go get ready, and we shall leave. Go? Go where? <laughs> you are about to be introduced. Amelia, I don't think it's a good idea to- To show you off? To have a handsome man on my arm? To allow my friends to see an educated, sophisticated man about town? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> oh, it's a quote from a movie. Never mind. I'll be back in a few minutes. I still don't get it. Where are we going? A dinner party. Given by a friend uh, or more of an acquaintance. Do you think this is a good idea? I think it's a wonderful idea. Now, don't worry. You're gonna be fine. I will be right by your side. I thought you said it was a small party. Oh, quit worrying. Okay, so there are a little more people here than I thought would be. It's going to be... Uh, Amelia, I was hoping that you would be able to join us. Thank you for inviting me, Dr. Frankens. I had to have someone here that was at least a pleasure to talk to. <laughs> Most of these academias are extremely boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that it isn't as bad as all that. And who have you brought with you? Oh, forgive me, Dr. Frankens. This is Adam. Adam Smith. He's my cousin, visiting from Boston. Well, any cousin of Amelia's is definitely a friend of mine. A pleasure to meet you. What are you staring at? Oh, forgive me, dear fellow. You see, I suffer from a horrendous disease. <laughs> I'm a rather brilliant surgeon, so I tend to notice some um, imperfections. I see that Miss Harris is here. I thought she never went to parties. <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's free food and drinks, she will always be there. Now, unfortunately, I must tear myself away from you and greet my other guests, as tedious as that can be. I shall speak to you later. Good to meet you, Mr. Smith. <sighs> that went better than I thought it would. Afraid I was going to start rampaging? <laughs> of course not, silly. Who is Dr. Frankens to you? Nothing. As I told you, he's more of an acquaintance. Why do you ask? He looks familiar. 
like I have seen him somewhere before. <laughs> Dr. Franken's walking through the woods is about as improbable as you running for mayor. No, not in the forest. There is something about his eyes. I've seen that look before. I remember those... eyes. Dr. Frankens, I'm afraid Amelia isn't here at the moment. Actually, I came to see you, dear fellow. May I come in? I'm not sure Amelia would want that. Oh, <laughs> Amelia and I know each other extremely well. What can I do for you, Dr. Frankens? No small talk. No offer for a drink. Very well. Straight to the point. I want you to help me. In what way could I possibly help you? Please, let us not fabricate the conversation. I know exactly who you are. Of course you do, Dr. Frankens. Amelia told you last night, I'm her cousin from Boston. <laughs> Did you honestly think that I believed that, even for one moment? No. Dear fellow, I know who you are and what you are. I think that it would be good time for you to leave. You are him. You are the, and I apologize for using the word, but the truth is, you are the monster. <sighs> you know, then you... Also know what I am capable of. Please, there's no need for violence. I only want you to help me in my research. What do you mean? Ask yourself, how would I know exactly what and who you are? Simple. My great-grandfather was indeed Victor Frankenstein. I knew it. I could see it in your eyes. Now don't panic. Your secret is safe with me. But don't you understand? Coursing through your veins is the secret of life. I am researching the very subject. And what would you want of me? I only need a small amount of your blood. Nothing major. Perhaps a skin sample. Maybe an MRI of your wonderful brain. I only want to study what Victor accomplished. How do you know about Victor? The story was handed down throughout the family. Even his notes, well, some of them survived. The most important ones, the secrets, were destroyed, unfortunately. Rightly so. Nature should never be trifled with Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> wear that moniker proudly. You don't understand. I don't want to take you apart. I only need small samples. Think of it. The end of sickness, of death itself. You sound just like him. A deranged man who failed. What he did to you, the way he failed, threw you away is inexcusable. I only want to rectify his mistake. Please, just think about it. Did you have a good day? Amelia, how much do you know about Dr. Frankens? <laughs> a little self-centered. Definitely full of himself. However, he is a brilliant surgeon. <laughs> I know that he's proposed to me on several occasions. Have you ever entertained the thought of being with him? <laughs> Ew! <laughs> Please! He has such a narcissistic personality that there is no way I could ever be with him. Ugh. I even told him to his face what I think of him. <laughs> that 
<laughs> That's why we haven't spoken in quite some time. He didn't like it very much. Anyway, why do you ask? He was here today while you were at work. Amelia, he knows what I am. What? How? How could he possibly know? Because he is a direct descendant of Victor Frankenstein. Remember? I told you that there was something about his eyes. He admitted it to me today. What did he want of you? Exactly. Something about studying my blood. My brain. He is completely insane. Did you get the samples from yesterday, Elliot? Yes, Dr. Frankens. All the test results are on your desk. Wonderful! Hopefully we will have a test subject very, very soon. An actual test subject? But how is that possible? Elliot, you know who my great-grandfather was. You studied his notes. What if I were to tell you that his experiment, the monster, was right here in this town? <laughs> But that would make him over 200 years old. Exactly. Remember the rather large gentleman that Amelia brought to my party? You're not saying that he is the monster Victor created? Yes, I am. Imagine what we can learn from such a specimen. Dr. Frankens, don't you think it is rather unethical? I mean, what sort of tests are you talking about? I told him I only wanted his blood. Samples from his skin. Perhaps an MRI. <laughs> what I want is that remarkable brain. I'm sure the MRI will give us everything that we need. <laughs> is that the extent of your mind, Elliot? You're so called scientific curiosity. Never, dear fellow. I want to study his brain outside the body. But that's... that's murder! Is it? For science, would it be considered murder? Doesn't science sacrifice some things? I don't mind taking samples, but what you are talking about is cold, calculated murder. But who am I murdering? A giant of a creature who was killed before? Damn. The lights are out. Perhaps it is fortuitous. Sometimes work is done better in the dark. Now, what were we talking about? You told me that much of Mary Shelley's work was fiction. The creature was presumed dead. I only go by what I read and believe. He is a killer. Make no mistake about that. And what does it make you if you do this? A great scientist! A man whose name, Frankenstein, will no longer be associated with a creature but will live on in history of science. Think of it, Elliot. We have an opportunity to discover the secret of life, to overcome death. You have the opportunity to help. By killing? It's not killing if he wasn't alive to start with. Imagine it, Elliot. An entire race of those creatures, Superman. Men who cannot die. Do you realize the amount of money the government, any government, or private corporations would throw at us for such a discovery? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Frankens. I can't be a part of such... such madness. <laughs> and what will you do? Run out into the street and tell everyone that Amelia's so-called cousin is the monster that my great-grandfather created? Hmm. 
Would you like me to measure you for the straitjacket now? I, I can at least warn him. Or Amelia. I don't think that would be wise, Elliot. And what is there to stop me? Oh, I really wish you had not said that. Well, did you enjoy your walk? Why are you sitting in candlelight? Power failure. I think it has affected the entire grid. That explains why it's so dark outside. Don't worry. I'm sure they'll get it fixed soon. So, how was your walk? Did you enjoy the fresh night air? <laughs> Not particularly. Did... did someone say something to you? No, it wasn't that. I've been thinking about the offer that Dr. Franklin's made. And you have come to a decision? Perhaps. I'm sorry. My mind is not working properly. Before I met you, my only concern was wondering what to fix to eat. I had my library, my solitude. Everything is so complicated now. Unfortunately, life is complicated. Look, the decision is yours to make. Whatever you decide, I will be right there with you. If you don't mind, I think I will go and see Dr. Frankens now. What's your emergency? Yes. I need the, the police. An ambulance. Oh, God. He's dead. Sir, calm down. Can you give me your location? I can't believe it. Uh, yes. 1275 Cumberland Drive. The large house on the end of the road. Hurry. I have emergency personnel dispatched to your location. Can you tell me what happened? Uh. My assistant, Dr. Elliot Carpenter, he's dead. Please, sir, take a deep breath and tell me what happened. I found him in the lab. He's... he's been killed, and I know who did it. Police are on the way. They should be there within five minutes. Did you actually see the person who did this? Not the actual killing, no. But I saw him running away from the house. It was... Um, Amelia Dearborn's cousin, Adam. Adam Smith. Adam, I'm so sorry. It's not your fault, Amelia. I told you before, I do not fit in your so-called society. I spoke with the detective. The evidence that they have is... Well, flimsy at best. I swear, Amelia, I did not kill anyone. This I know, and I believe you. Try not to worry, I've got your back. I will be representing you in court, but first, we have to try and get you a bond hearing as soon as possible. Perhaps it is best if I simply stay in this cage. Don't say that! And whatever you do, do not talk to anyone, ever! No matter what they ask of you. I understand, Amelia. As long as you believe me. I do. I honestly do. There's something about this whole thing that just doesn't add up. Amelia, I can only tell you what we found. And believe me, there are more questions than answers at the moment. Jessica, we've known each other a long time. I considered you a friend. And I sincerely... I sincerely hope that we can remain friends, even after this case is over. Why did you arrest Adam? Oh, I'm going to level with you, Amelia. This whole case, it just doesn't sit well with me. You have doubts? I have major doubts. Unfortunately, Dr. Frankens has a lot of friends within the courts. I was practically forced to arrest Adam. How is Dr. Frankens involved? I thought it was his assistant that was killed. Didn't you know? Dr. Frankens found the body. He also claims he saw your client running from the house. Ah, so he was the first one to find the body. 
Adam was basically in the wrong place at the wrong time. Something else that is very strange. We can find no record on an Adam Smith in any database. That's because he's never been in trouble, ever. That may be, but right now, he is in a lot of trouble. How was the victim murdered? A .22 caliber bullet was pulled from the man's brain. He was shot with a Derringer. That's a rather small gun, wouldn't you say? It did the job. The DA is pushing for no bond as well. Adam picked a great night to do it. Why do you say that? The entire area lost power. No lights of any kind. Darkness was definitely on his side. Amelia, what brings you to my humble abode? May I come in? Of course. Dr. Frankens, as you know, I'm representing Adam in the upcoming trial. Ah, yes. I deeply regret that you are having to face this horrible incident. Adam seemed to be, well, so refined and intelligent. I understand that you offered him an opportunity. You wanted to study him. Oh, that. Yes, Amelia. It is true. I noticed the scars on his face. I told him that as a surgeon, I could possibly erase those scars. But I would need samples of his blood type, skin, and so on. (laughs) And so on. You mean, his brain. I beg your pardon? I heard that you wanted to do an MRI on his brain. Oh, yes. Well, I noticed what a large gentleman he was. There have been scientific studies on tall individuals such as Adam. I'm actually following along those lines. I see. What can you tell me about the night that Elliot was killed? Oh, it was horrible. I remember the power going out. Elliot was still in the lab downstairs. I heard the gunshot, ran to the lab, and saw the body slumped over the desk. I still remember seeing the blood on his face. But how do you know it was Adam that pulled the trigger? Well, I didn't actually see Adam do it. However, when I ran upstairs to phone the police, I did see your client running from the house. All rise. The Honorable Judge Samuel Ridgefield presiding. You may be seated. Now then, is everyone ready? Good. Let the games begin. How are you holding up, Adam? It's not going very well, is it? Now, now don't get discouraged. The prosecution doesn't have much of a case. Our turn will come after the recess. I tried to warn you, Amelia. The world does not change. People do not change. In their eyes, I'm still the bloodthirsty creature from their nightmares. Now just stop that. I told you there was something very wrong about this entire case. I just need to find it. Perhaps it would be better if I was simply locked away. I won't have you talking that way. Let me do my job, Adam. (sighs) I'm sorry. I trust you. It's the others I don't have faith in. You don't know what it is like being hunted, caged, feared. No, I don't. And for that, I am sorry. (sighs) Tell me the truth. What were you doing at Franken's house? I decided not to help him with his so-called experiments. His eyes... unnatural. Almost as if he were like me. They held deep within them the madness of Frankenstein. Unnerving. 
I'm hoping you get some information soon that just may prove your claim. All right, Miss Dearborn, is the defense ready? We are, Your Honor. Then call your first witness. Your Honor, I would like to recall to the stand the prosecution's witness, Dr. Frankens. Hmm, a little unusual, but I will allow it. Dr. Frankens, you understand that you are still under oath. Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Frankens, you are considered somewhat of a celebrity in this town, aren't you? Celebrity? No. Just a surgeon and a research scientist. I understand that you have contracts with our military. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So you see, I am not allowed to discuss my research. I would not dream of asking you about it. What I would like to know, Dr. Frankens, is how you managed to see my client running from your house on the night in question. As I stated before, I looked out the window while I was phoning the police. How far away would you estimate you were from where you saw my client? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps a few dozen yards. You have better eyes than I do. <laughs> I ask you, could you see him clearly? If you mean, did I see his face? No. I can't say that. Then how, Mr. Frankens, do you know that it was him? <laughs> how many eight-foot-tall men are in this town? <laughs> yes, I see your point. So you do recognize that my client is rather large. One of the largest men that I have ever come into contact with. Could you indulge me and describe my client? Well, he's at least eight foot tall, long black hair, a few scars on his face, possibly from an accident. What about his hands? No, oh, extremely large. Would you say mm, twice the size of a normal hand? Almost three times as large. I see. Yes, a very apt description. Now then, this is State's Exhibit A, the gun that was found near the body. Would you agree? Mm, yes, it does look like it. A rather small handgun. A twenty-two caliber Derringer. I would like to present this up close to the jury. You see? It almost fits in the palm of my hand. Objection, Your Honor! Relevance! Miss Dearborn, where exactly is this line of questioning going? I ask that the court indulge me for just a few minutes, please. It goes towards the facts of my case. If the prosecution has no objection, I, I'll give you a few, but get to the point. Thank you, Your Honor. Now then, Dr. Frankens, your hands. Would you say you have rather lithe hands? I mean, special, optimal for surgery. I suppose it is what makes me a great surgeon. I see. And yes, you are a brilliant surgeon. But now I ask you, as a doctor, how would my client pull the trigger of this rather tiny gun? That, I don't understand the question. It's a rather easy one to answer. If the court will allow... Here, Adam. Could you hold the gun? Don't worry. It's not loaded. Now, try to pull the trigger. I can't. And why is that? I can't even fit my finger into it. You see? It would be impossible for my client to pull the trigger of such a tiny gun as this. One other thing, Dr. Frankens. You testified that you found your assistant slumped over the desk in the lab. Yes, that is correct. You also told me as well as the detective, you could see the blood on his face. Oh, it was a most horrible sight. Could you describe the room where you found him? It was in the lab, in the basement part of my home. Only one door? Yes, only one door. 
Any windows to the outside? No. It is quite private for the work that we do. Is it a rather large area? It runs almost the length of the house. We need the room for the experiments that we conduct. I see. And the desk that your assistant was slumped over was at the far end. Uh, I, I believe so, yes. And yet you opened the door, saw the body, saw the blood, and went upstairs and phoned the police. Uh, that, that is what I said, isn't it? How were you able to see the blood? I mean, you testified that you didn't actually go into the lab, just stood at the door. I don't understand the question. Remember, Dr. Frankens, you testified that there was a power outage in your part of the city. You didn't say you had a flashlight of any kind. I can buy that you saw my client running from the house, but as there was only one door, you should have seen him coming from the lab, but you didn't. There is no way that you could have seen blood on the face of the victim in complete darkness. Very clever, Amelia. Very, very clever. Order! Order in this court! Shut up! All of you! Come one step closer and I will break her neck! Oh, you, you are... Frankenstein! <laughs> yes. My great-grandfather created that thing. And now I shall carry on his work. Let Amelia go, Dr. Frankenstein. And what will you do? You are nothing more than a scientific experiment gone wrong! Stay back, Adam. I swear, I will break her neck. I said to let her go, Dr. Frankenstein. Please, Dr. Frankens, you don't know what he's capable of. Oh, shut up. Don't come any closer, you pathetic creature. Let go of my arm. Amelia, get out of the way. No. It would be so easy, so easy for me to squeeze, to crush your throat, and watch you die. Please, Adam, don't do it. Yes, so easy, Dr. Frankenstein. But I believe that you are facing a much worse fate. And here's to you, Adam. You have shown that you are more human than most of us. All of the charges were dropped? Yes, with prejudice. What does that mean? It means that you are completely free. They can never, ever touch you again. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for showing me that there are good people in the world. You are most welcome. But wait, where are you going? I can't stay, Amelia. I think that we both know it. But I, I, I just thought... Oh, Adam! As I told you before, the world, the people, do not change. There's no place for me in society. Where will you go? Back to your cave? It is no longer safe. But how will I visit you? Amelia, you will never see me again. Oh, perhaps one day. No, it's not fair. You are free. You're more of a man than anyone I've ever met. I'm so sorry, but I have to go. <sighs> 
would you mind? I mean, would you let me give you a kiss goodbye? Is it something that you feel terribly strong about? Yes, it is. It has been an honor and a privilege to have met you, Amelia Dearborn. Don't ever change what and who you are. 